great search every single week brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey, Adafruit, and DigiKey team up to show you Lady Ada's superpower, which is find the stuff on DigiKey. This week, what are you showing? Okay, this search? week I'm going to show how I found the eval board because I realized um, getting eval boards is it's a lot better these days than it used to be. Um, but you do have to do a couple little, there's a couple of tricks that I have when searching for eval boards. So let's go to the overhead real fast and I'll show you what I got. We're going to go a little backwards. I'm going to show you what I got and then how I got there. Um, so this is the dev board I just showed by prototyping, um, getting this design together. So let me remove this. So this is the eval board that I picked. So this is the um, AT Tiny 817 Explained. And I'll show you what I like about it, and then I'll show you how I found it. So one of the things I like about it, first of all, it didn't come with these socket headers. It just came with this board. Um, number one thing to look for in a eval board, it's, it seems silly, but it's really important. Get an eval board that has the programmer built in. Um, a lot of chips these days, you need to program them. And if you don't have a programmer, now you need a second thing. Now, sometimes low-cost eval boards will come with a um, SWD or JTAG port. There's nothing wrong with those if you happen to already have a J-Link. But a lot of times, you know, especially for a new chipset, I didn't have the program. I don't have a special programmer for this. So you'll often see that there's another chip, which in this case is bigger, that happens which is the debug interface. So, you know, that's just something to look for. Um, second, I'm a big fan of less is more with eval boards. You know, I used to have an STK 500, for those two people who remember the STK 500. This thing was a beast. It was like a hundred bucks and it had like everything. It had like seven segments and it had sockets and it had like an LCD and it was like so much, so much, so much, so much. I really like, you know, again, the same kind of sockets, it was, unsoldered it had a lot of all the everything was broken out it was ready to get wired up it has you know just one button and one led these are the only two things that are built in um to it this, this led is built in this is a user controllable and this is a um uh button that's user controllable but other than that there's and then there's like two capacitive touch pads if you want to use capacitive touch that's it i love it I don't, I don't like eval boards that are over over the top. I mean, they have a place, but um, I'd rather get two or three under $20 dev boards than one $60 to $80 dev boards because I'll tell you another thing, dev boards break. That's their goal, right? Their goal is you use them so much that they, they give up their blue smoke monster. So um, that's another thing. Get, get two always eval boards whenever you want. Okay, so let's go to the computer. Now I've, I've, I'm going backwards. Talked about the eval board. So this is the chip that I was going to use, the 816 or the 806. We, we covered this in a previous great search. So I want to find an eval board for it. Um, but you may notice that there isn't an eval board linked from here. You know, sometimes there's an eval board that's linked directly. Um, but there isn't. And if I type in ATtiny816, um, you'll see I go straight to embedded microcontrollers, if I type in AT tiny ones, actually I didn't, I didn't type this in, but what if I type in eval? No results, okay? So are you gonna, are you gonna cry? No, you're not gonna cry, you're gonna use uh, your great searching power. So most chip companies do not have an eval board for every chip that they make, and that's really common because they have to focus on like, you know, one device in the family. So in this case, as we um, have shown, this chip is part of a family, a group of chips where, um, and this has, STM is 32s are also famous for this, right? There's like F5, you know, F013s, and there's like characters, and there's like how many pins, and how much RAM, and how much black. It's all super configurable, so you will not necessarily be able to find each configuration of that chip family um, available as an eval board. So in this case, what you want to do is... Um, first off, you can just search for, um, you can search, uh, it, the microchip site, like you go to the, the site of the company that makes the chip. So if I type in ATtiny816 eval here, um, it'll actually pop up ATtiny817 development tools. And so that, again, that's not unusual. You'll often be able to get 
the higher level, the 817 is a, is a better version of that chip. It has more flash, more RAM. So that, that's what you're going to find. You're going to find like usually near the top because they want to show off all the capabilities. So for example, I like the SAMD51. The SAMD51 doesn't actually have a nice eval board, or at least at the time, it didn't have a nice eval board from a microchip. Instead, they had the SAMD54, which has, or the SAMD54, which has Ethernet and CAN, but it's otherwise almost completely identical, right? It has some extra stuff. Um, so in this case, um, there are two eval boards available. So let's go back to DigiKey. So now that we know what to look for, another thing you can do, you know, is my trick is um, whatever chip you're looking for. So like I want the 816 eval board, you just take a number or two off. This doesn't always work um, because depending on how the companies structure their part numbers. But in this case, um, you can search for like AT Tiny 8 eval. And then um, under here, you can see that there's some evaluation boards. So of course, there's um, uh, there's evaluation boards that might use this. In this case, none of these are available because they're actually QTouch, which happened to use the AT Tiny 88. Under, uh, under this eval board, you'll see that, why did this, okay, sorry, under, AT Tiny 8 from within here. Right, so you'll see that there is, this is interesting. So within, of course, if you want to search from within a category, don't forget, I, I just, I forgot to mention before, you can search from within results. I don't usually use this, um, but if I'm looking, if I know I want an eval board and then I want one that uses a chip, you go to this section and then you search from within this result. So now I can see that there's only 10 options. There's, of course, um, the trinket, yay, it's like my design, with the AT Tiny 85. Um, and then you'll see the, the ones that we saw before, the 817 eval board. Um, Olamex has a AT Tiny 85. But yeah, basically there's two, two boards you can get. So let's open up both. One second. So there's nothing wrong with picking either of these, but tell you what I like. So again, this was the AT Tiny 817 eval board. It's got the debug interface here. I always look for that. The main chip and then a lot of breakouts, but you know, very a very simple design. And then over here is the Pro. So this is deceptive because you're probably like, oh, this doesn't have the debug interface. You don't see anything. It's actually a double-sided board. So what you know, this has breakouts, but they're um, header pin type. And um, this has a little bit more measurement. It has a little bit more pins. You know, this is the pro version. If you actually want to see what's on the board itself, you need to go to um, the uh, data sheet for the eval board. And then I guess see, this isn't like the most amazingly great eval board data sheet because I wish they just had a photo of the bottom. Um, but if you go near, go here, you can see this is kind of like a diagram of the top. They do have a diagram of the bottom and they show that, yeah, there is this like debug interface here and like all this circuitry and, and it probably does like high voltage reprogramming and all that, all that stuff. So that said, given the choice between the two, I kind of like this one more because it's simpler. Um, but if you want, I think this has like more high voltage. It has the current measurement disconnect. So it's a little bit more, you know, this is called the pro and the other one's called the mini. If you're doing like low power stuff or you're doing something which where you need the high voltage programmer, I'd probably go with the pro, but it is 40 bucks compared to this one, which is like 14 bucks, 12 bucks. So this is my winner. This is the one I liked. So again, get two. And then once you've done your development, again, as I, I've said this before, if you're designing with a microcontroller or any chip, you pick the highest uh, pin count, highest flash, highest RAM, build your application, your prototype within it, and then you can um, tick down and pick the one that will fit. So the 817 has, you know, the slightly nicer chip than the, 807, it has more pins than the 806, but it's easy for you to develop on this and then in your compiler just 
select the smaller chip when you're ready to go to production and like see how small you can get your compiler to compile for and that's the chip you can actually use in production and of course it's um you know people forget you can always rework this chip you can remove this chip off of here and solder on a smaller less flash less ram version if you need to it takes a little bit of scale but that's a you know one thing that i do when i'm getting near to completion of my prototype and i'm like well i really before I order PCBs, before I, I go into a more intense design, order some chips, hot air this off, hot air my replacement on, and then I can actually develop with like, you know, a fresh chip in the exact package and size and, and capabilities that I'm going to uh, target for production. So valve boards, it is. So I got two of these, and uh, they're quite nice. I do recommend them. It's great. Where is